and welcome to this episode of Inside Southeastern Basketball with head coach Jay Ladner presented by the Hampton Inn of Hammond. I'm Alan Waddell and joined as always by your head coach of your Southeastern men's basketball team, Coach Jay Ladner. Coach, thanks for being here. A couple of very exciting games this past week at the University Center. Two games that literally were decided by a total of two points, uh, both <laughs> one-point games. You were on the right side of one and the wrong side of another. Uh, if you like exciting basketball, you had an opportunity to see two good ones. Right. And uh, we had good crowds for both of those basketball games. One had a national uh, television audience there with Abilene Christian. And, and again, uh, the games were extremely exciting. Uh, one of them was more exciting than the other, the one that we won. No doubt about it. As a coach, when you knock off Abilene Christian, you actually had been on a little run there. Four out of five at that point. Team playing, you know, playing well down the stretch here. Well, that's one thing as we head into conference tournament play that we want to be doing. It's a very, it's, it is not a, an exact science to be able to have your team playing well, but I do feel like, and I think the results have shown, we're playing our best basketball of the season as we approach conference tournament time. Uh, our goal is, our goals as we've told our players, discussed with our players, they're still out there in front of us. And our goal is to get to that national national tournament, get to the NCAA tournament. So we're excited about that. We, we certainly feel like that we, we can may even make more progress between now uh, and, and in two weeks when we go to, to Katy for the conference tournament. So uh, we really want to focus in. We've challenged the players and um, really, really kind of excited about the way they've been responding. Coach, I'll ask you this, as I know anytime you're coming to a program and, and trying to change the mentality, change the culture, uh, here recently, it, it's been a winning culture right now. It's because you've won four out of the last five, and then you go into the UNO game, you drop a tough one-point game. Uh, it, it, do you see any difference in the players after you're playing so well and then after losing that game, so after you've been on such, on such a roll? What I see in the players, uh, and I think if we could have just photographed or, or – tape the post-game locker room. Right. They're, they're disappointed, they're hurt. That's a great thing, you know, when a team's losing. They're, they still have a lot of fight in them, a lot of pride in them. Uh, I can't be any more prouder. I know we've discussed that, that on prior shows, uh, the way that they're playing. And um, uh, they, you know, I, I know the, the, our, our people, the Southeastern people and our fans have been seeing that. And we're, the crowds have been very good and, and, and steadily improving, uh, even though that our win-loss record is not, not the best in the country. Um, but teams fighting hard, they're scrapping, they've won four out of six, easily could have been six out of the last six, um, and we're excited about to play in these last four games. Yeah, you, you just took the words right out of my mouth. We're going to talk more at the end of the show about specifically your opponents coming up, but you have four games left, three of them are on the road, you finish up at home at the University Center. What do you want to see out of your club these next four games as you get ready for that conference tournament? Well, as we just as, you know, talked about, we want to continue to improve and we want to be playing absolutely our best basketball. Basically, we want to be peaking at conference tournament time. Um, we feel like that if we can do that, it's going to, always going to be the team that can put three or four games together, depending on our seating, depending on uh, three or four games together to win that championship. And, and, and that's, our, that's still our goal. And um, I feel like that we're certainly, we've, we've proven that we can compete and win. We've, we've proven that we can compete and win with some of the best teams in the country. So we need to, you know, we, we just want to continue to do that package out again. Really, we really focus on uh, our fundamental play, making sure that we're where we need to be fundamentally, control all the things that we can control on our end, and, and have all of our guys mentally and physically peaking in two weeks. All right, well, let's go ahead and take a break. When we come back, we'll take a look at the highlights as the Lions took on Abilene Christian at the University Center, right here on Inside Southeastern Basketball with head coach Jay Ladner, presented by the Hampton Inn of Hammond. With every stay at Hampton, enjoy our free hot breakfast options. You did a great job. It looks good. Then fuel up with up to 9,000 honors bonus points on a long weekend stay. Make every stay more rewarding and feel the Hamptonality. Inside Southeastern Basketball with Jay Ladner is made possible by Angelo's Lawnscape of Louisiana. For over 30 years, Angelo's Lawnscape of Louisiana has been a premier landscape architect design company. Angelo specializes in both commercial and residential work. Angelo's offers their clients a buildable and realistic solution with a focus on design, construction, and proper maintenance techniques. Owner Angelo DiStefano, Southeastern Class of 1972, invites you to visit Angelo's Lawnscape of Louisiana at 13750 Jefferson Highway in Baton Rouge or visit their website at angeloslawnscape.com. Angelo's Lawnscape of Louisiana, a proud supporter of Southeastern 
and Southeastern Basketball. Inside Southeastern Basketball is made possible by support from friends of Ginger Ford North Shore Fuller Center for Housing located in Hammond, Louisiana. Ginger Ford North Shore Fuller Center is a nonprofit Christian housing ministry serving Tangibaho and Livingston Parishes. They strive to help low-income, elderly, and disabled citizens obtain safe, decent, and affordable housing by using volunteers to build and repair. Homeowners pay for the building materials based on terms they can afford. The Fuller Center is supported by three retail stores, which accept donated items from the public. The reused store features construction supplies, appliances, and furniture. The Fuller Shop carries housewares and decorative items for the homes as well as books, videos, and jewelry, while the Rabbit Hole sells gently used clothes, shoes, and fashion accessories. Visit all three stores at 955 South Morrison Boulevard in Hammond or call 985-419-0256 to schedule a pickup. For details on volunteer opportunities, find them on Facebook under Ginger Ford North Shore Fuller Center or visit www.gingerfordnorthshore.org. Welcome back to Inside Southeastern Basketball with Head Coach Jay Ladner, presented by the Hampton Inn of Hammond. Your Lions were in action against Abilene Christian at the University Center for a nationally televised ball game. Here's the highlights. We prepare for the uh, opening tip. You look at the officials. And the tip is won by Southeastern controlling the basketball. Zay Jackson coming off that near triple double on Monday. This is Anochi Ochi missing underneath in the rebound. Austin Cook on cue with our pregame player profile being the top rebounder on their ball club. Controls for ACU. This is Wentz for three, and he delivers it. They're number one in made threes per game in the conference, eight a game. They're number one in three-point percentage as a team. There's a turnover. Now he's trying to push the issue off the alley oop and a slam with two hands by Devontae Upson, the senior from Amarillo, Texas. What a pass. What a pass inside. Working up top to the sideline, Jenkins off the baseline, hangs and lays it in. Yeah. Jenkins at 6-2 out of Laplace, Louisiana. And Jenkins will pick and pop there with Upson underneath for Anochi Ochi in the reverse lay-in. Gives Southeastern the lead back. Got great position, and, and Upson just used his height to actually get the ball inside. Southeastern. No harm, no foul, I guess. Working with the basketball, Zay Jackson. Crosses over, gets into the alley, and scores. That was nifty. Coming off his first double-double, 15 points, 10 rebounds. In their loss to uh, McNeese State on Monday, he... A little bit of trouble because of the size, and then he's got to give him some spacing. Duplessis with a beautiful move. It looked like he was about to kick it out. Held onto the ball and got the lay-in. Again, it was Breeze. Coast to coast. Duplessis, second in a row. Recovers it, nothing in the corner. Dribbles into the alley, scoops and scores. Great body control, put him on his left shoulder. Got him, but his body in between the defender and the ball. Got to be able to do a lot to lead your team in scoring, and that's what Hawkins does at 13.5 per game. Ball pushed out to Jenkins, recovers it, nothing in the corner, dribbles into the alley, scoops and scores. Great body control, put him on his left shoulder, got him, but his body in between the defender and the ball. Jalen Little, they rotate to Wentz in the corner, can't see over the 6-2 Jenkins. So he comes to the opposite wing and Jenkins intercepts the ball. Ahead for Zay Jackson, who lays it in. He ended the first half with a buzzer beater. He starts to scoring in the second half with a layup. He blesses. Starting low, running a lot of screens. For Wentz misses the three. He was long. Say Jackson, long rebound. And now Upson with the basketball. Upson to the free throw line. Finds Jenkins. Back underneath. Upson got it back. You know, he had that wonderful alley oop dunk early in the ball game. That's his first shot since that dunk. Gets a couple of screens. Passes off the double screen. Upson gives it back. And that is save for three. 
He has a game high 18 points. Loose ball picked up by Duplessis. He wants to attack the basket. It does. Jimmy Duplessis with the lay in. And it's a two point game. But the Lions have the ball. Down the lane, Duplessis, and it's tied again at 51. Three guards in there right now. All can shoot. And the ball is picked off by Jenkins. Cedric Jenkins lays it in. Can't believe there was no foul. He breaks the deadlock. It's a two-point Lions lead. It's an ACU timeout with 2.22 left. Another fast break. That's 10 points off the fast break as to the two points that Abilene Christian has. Fourth steal for Cedric Jenkins on the day. Jay Jackson. Duplessis and Jackson playing catch down around the perimeter. Jenkins gets a hand on it. Now 10 to shoot. Jenkins with the basketball. Five to shoot. Zay Jackson's got to do something right here. Stop and pop and bottom it out. What a shot. That actually switched to the zone to take away his penetration. What a beautiful shot coming off the screen. For the Lions, only five to shoot. That was nearly a great effort by Wentz to try to knock it into the backcourt. And so Jenkins and the inbounder do pluses. Three on the clock, two on the clock. Zay Jackson into the lane, runner. He did beat the shot clock, but he couldn't produce with five seconds, with four seconds, one point game. Williams attacks the basket, put it off the side of the backboard. No good, his time expires. Coach, a uh, very exciting ball game, a game that literally comes down to the final possession, uh, a one-point game, great defensive stop on the last possession of the ball game, and you get a big victory against Abilene Christian. Well, uh, certainly, you know, it, it's it's ironic how both of the, the two games that you're referring to, the Abilene Christian game and the UNO game, were so, so similar. We score to go ahead right there at the end uh, against Abilene Christian. Uh, we come down, we make a good defensive stop. Uh, uh, Devontae Upson, who, who's really begun to come into his own, uh, deflects a shot right there at the end, protecting the basket, preserves the win. Uh, same thing happened against UNO, except this time the kid made a tremendous shot for UNO, and Devontae was just a little bit late getting there, protecting the ball, but he made a nice nice play to the basket. But the Abilene Christian game uh, certainly was a, a good win for us, a, a very good basketball team, a uh, very well coached team, very well disciplined. And I thought our guys did an outstanding job, particularly on the defensive end. Coach, I got to ask you this as well, because throughout the year, uh, Nochi Ochi, Devontae have struggled a little bit with foul trouble. How big was it to have them both on the floor on that last possession against Abilene Christian? Well, it certainly, you know, I, well chronicled our, our, our injury situation, which has affected our lack of depth. So when one of those guys gets into foul trouble, we just don't have the luxury of having players that can come off the bench and, and play at that particular level. So the fact that they were both in the game at the same time late actually has been a very rare occurrence for us. Um, and, you know, uh, inside players have a tendency to foul a little right. more anyway because of, of the proximity to the basket and the physicality in there. Well, again, both of those guys out there is critical for us. They're, they're two of our seniors. We have three on the team, uh, along with Cedric Jenkins, and, and uh, we count on those guys, particularly in those type of situations because of experience. All right, let's go ahead and take a break. When we come back, we're going to take a look at the highlights as the Lions will turn around just a quick two days later and take on UNO right here on Inside Southeastern Basketball. Head coach Jay Ladner presented by the Hampton Entertainment. With every stay at Hampton, enjoy our free hot breakfast options. You did a great job. It looks good. Then fuel up with up to 9,000 honors bonus points on a long weekend stay. Make every stay more rewarding and feel the Hamptonality. Inside Southeastern Basketball is made possible by support from friends of Ginger Ford North Shore Fuller Center for Housing located in Hammond, Louisiana. Ginger Ford North Shore Fuller Center is a nonprofit Christian housing ministry serving Tangibahoe and Livingston Parishes. They strive to help low-income, elderly, and disabled citizens obtain safe, decent, and affordable housing by using volunteers to build and repair. Homeowners pay for the building materials based on terms they can afford. The Fuller Center is supported by three retail stores which accept 
donated items from the public. The reused store features construction supplies, appliances, and furniture. The Fuller Shop carries housewares and decorative items for the homes as well as books, videos, and jewelry, while the Rabbit Hole sells gently used clothes, shoes, and fashion accessories. Visit all three stores at 955 South Morrison Boulevard in Hammond or call 985-419-0256 to schedule a pickup. For details on volunteer opportunities, find them on Facebook under Ginger Ford North Shore Fuller Center or visit www.gingerfordnorthshore.org. Welcome back to Inside Southeastern Basketball with Head Coach Jay Ladner presented by the Hampton Inn of Hammond. The Lions would turn around after a big victory against Abilene Christian and take on UNO at the UC. Here's the highlights. Top of the key, now will reverse, find Jenkins on the right side. They're looking for Devontae down low. Upson's got it. Man-to-man -man defense by uh, UNO, and the shot no good by Upson. Got his own rebound, stuck it up and in. And the Lions lead 2-0 here. Devontae, a missed shot, rebound, and a putback. So UNO turns it over after they have the numbers, and Jackson left to right in the front court, and Zay's up top. Right side to Jenkins on the wing. Down low to Ochi. Ochi's going to drive baseline, power it up. That one no good, got his own rebound. He'll stick it back up and in, and Ochi, the missed shot, but the power back up. The two big men each have a bucket here, and it's 5-4 UNO with 15.50 to go here in the first half. The third of the uh, ball game. Long rebound. Jenkins going to take it middle of the paint. And wrap around, lay up and in. Jenkins, his first bucket. And the Warrior gives the Lions the lead, 6-5. Jenkins uh, looking to uh, inbound. He gives it in to Jackson. Jackson head fake, lays it up, couldn't get it to go. Upson there with the follow through, count it, and one. For the Lions, Duplissis uh, inbounds it to Jackson. Lions working with a fresh 35, and Jackson's uh, angling off to the right. Jackson on the right side, baseline drive, behind the back dribble. He'll skip it across to Greaves. Daniel's going to put it on the floor, power it up, and in. Greaves got a couple of buckets. 13-12, and Greaves had a couple the other night. They called him for it. A charge both times, a little more body control here. Greaves has gone for He's given the Lions a lead, 13-12. Jenkins stop skipping a jump. Top of the key, bounce pass, backdoor cut. Jackson, reverse layup. Good. Now well, they've worked on that a little bit, you could tell. Jenkins the assist. Jackson the bucket, 15-14. Lions back on top. Jackson with the basketball into the front court. Gets a screen by Greaves. Zay to Greaves. Daniel sets up for three. And that one hit the front of the rim and fell over. And Greaves has got the Lions' first three of the night. 161 of them babies on the year. Leading by one. Got a hurry to get it in. And they uh, do over the top. And a steal by Jackson. And Zay will take it and slam it home on the other end. UNO struggling to get it in. And a turnover, their fourth of the night. And a bucket by Jackson. The slam on the other end. And Zay's fourth point. Going to drive to the uh, free throw line. Shot clock is stolen. Uh, steal by Greaves down the floor to Jackson. Zay's going to take it, lay it up and in. The uh, steal by the Lions, a bucket on the other end. Jackson's hit the last four, and the Lions on top, 22 19. We go under seven minutes. This is down to Upson. And Devontae with the push off. This second. Allen to Jackson. Jackson, middle of the floor, near side, Duplissis. Duplissis, a little head fake. Going to drive middle of the paint, kick it up. And Devontae takes it up, counted in the foul. Bye, That's how you run it right there, folks. Down the floor, Jackson. Pumps it down to Duplissis, layup. That one good, Jimmy. Got it to roll. Jackson just kind of slapped it toward Duplissis. Jimmy the bucket, it's 30. 26, the Lions have scored the last four. Barclay a bucket, Duplissis a two right there. Go Jackson in the front court. Crossover dribble. Jackson into Jenkins. Jenkins baseline drive in the middle to Ochi. Ochi lays it up and in. Boy, nice pass by Jenkins in the middle of traffic. Found his uh, teammate Ochi. Shoot no good. Rebound fought for on the floor. UNO out of there. Had it for a moment. Greaves comes down with it. Daniel looking to run. Daniel in the middle of the floor. He's got it at the top of the key. He'll stop. He'll take it. Lay it up. That one no good. Rebound. Stick back up and in by Ochi. Yeah. Okay. Lions needed a bucket. Okay. Ochi a big one there, 50-47. Still got a media timeout, the 12-minute media. We're down to 9.50. Jimmy up top. Free throw line going to drive. Kick it out, Jenkins. Cedric sets up for three. Yes. Cedric with a three. Maybe that's uh, the one that gets him going here tonight. Cedric's first tray of the night. 
66 62 four point UNO lead just under two minutes here side Brown one minute to go Brown's got it in the corner stolen by Duplessis Jimmy in the floor gets it into the front court 70 66 Greaves sets up for three on the way yes Greaves hit a three 70 69 timeout Southeastern hanging in here they'll get it into Broyles Broyles up the floor Broyles, free throw line, going to try to drive, lay it up. That one got it, went up and in with 10.2 to go. Greaves to Jackson. Jackson in the front court. Jackson right to left, going to get it. Zay, near side to Greaves. Greaves with a head fake, going to drive. He's going to lay it up. That one bounces around, no good, and a rebound to UNO. Privateers win, 74-73. And the Lions fall by one here at home. Happened in a hurry right there. UNO give Royals credit. Coach, really a, a heartbreaking loss to UNO. You've been playing so well, uh, and just this one just slipped away there at the end. Had a shot and just didn't go in at the end. Well, you know, the, the fact is, is we, we did play even well in this game. Right. You have to give UNO credit uh, as well. Coach Schlesinger does a great job with his team, and they played very well as well. And I, th I think uh, anybody that attended the game, you probably saw – uh, the the early seeds of a budding rivalry. Uh, it was very intense. Uh, I don't think. I think there were some. There was a little bit of chippiness out there on the floor, and some words exchanged even at the end of the ball game. Um, uh, certainly, we want to. We're we're always going to maintain a sportsmanlike stance. And uh, but uh, anybody that in tennis would have witnessed those things, and it was it, that sometimes is a result of the intensity of the play. And, uh, but I think you're seeing the beginning of a rivalry. Two close schools, um, uh, easily, easy probably for these schools, kind of like with Nichols, uh, Nichols State, uh, who, who's, who big rivalries of ours, uh, to see it happening. So I think that's exciting, but I think uh, overall in the, in, the, in the long term, that's good. You know, every, you need some rivalries, you need some excitement, and I think, I think you saw that the other night. I think I, I totally agree. I was going to say I think that's good for college basketball. You know, whenever you have, as long as you keep the sportsmanship, I think it's it's great for college basketball to have those type of rivalries. But it's so unique in basketball how it can certainly just come down to two possessions and their shot goes down, ours hangs on the rim and doesn't go down. It was that close. It was that close, and and you know it was disappointing. We had just won a basketball game in a very similar situation with Abilene Christian in our prior game, and then to have that happen, our guys fought so hard. They came back. We were down six with just a little over a minute left. Uh, stolen inbounds pass, laid it up, went in. They called timeout. Uh, n certainly knew that they were going to take the ball to the rim. Uh, most teams do in those particular situations, attempting to draw a foul, uh, forced a player to his weak hand. He made a, a scooping layup shot, very nice shot. Look, you know, we wanted uh, Devontae Ups in our best shot blocker at the rim, and he was just a little late getting there. But you have to give the UNO player credit uh, for making a, making a very tough shot. But it was certainly an exciting finish. Yeah, it it really really hurts, you know, to lose a basketball game. We had a, a an emotionally depleted locker room after the game. A lot of hung heads and hung shoulders, you know. And I see that as a positive thing. We're late in the season. We're still relevant in the league race. Uh, as far as the conference play is concerned, we're in fifth place right now, uh, heading fifth seed heading into our conference play. Now we still have four left. That certainly could change, but but we're in control of that. We want to maintain at least the fifth position. There's an outside, a mathematical shot for us even to move to fourth, which would give us a, a buy. That's going to be a little difficult. We'd have to have some help, but certainly fifth place in the league it, it is certainly an attainable goal at this point. At least it's in our control. And if we went out, we will finish fifth. And that would be, I think, a great, great um, accomplishment for this particular team based on what they've had to face throughout the season. Certainly would be. And there's four big games left, three on the road, one at home. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll tell you about the schedule for this week. And also, we'll get coaches' take on some of those uh, in-season recruiting battles that they're fighting right now, right here on Inside Southeastern Basketball with head coach Jay Ladner, presented by the Hampton Inn of Hammond. With every stay at Hampton, enjoy our free hot breakfast options. You did a great job. It looks good. Then fuel up with up to 9,000 honors bonus points on a long weekend stay. Make every stay more rewarding and feel the Hamptonality. Welcome back to Inside Southeastern Basketball with head coach Jay Ladner, presented by the Hampton Inn of Hammond. As we're now going to turn our attention and talk about uh, the games that are coming up. But before we do that, Coach, I want to get you to comment a little bit. I know uh, 
college basketball, Division One basketball, recruiting is a year-round thing. It seems like every week we're getting together. Sometimes we have to move the time we tape the show because you're going to see a player, you're going out recruiting. Your coaching staff's working very hard on the in-season recruiting. Well, we won't allow ourselves to be outworked in recruiting. Uh, recruiting is the lifeblood of any program, and, and in, you're right, it is a 365-day-a-year, uh, 24-hour day, seven-day-a-week action and you just cannot let it die and uh, when you do there's a chance that you may not get done what you need to get done. Our goal at Southeastern Louisiana is to win the national championship. We can't do that without obviously national championship level players and we're working to that end. We are extremely excited about the two players that we were able to sign in the early period um, and then we uh, certainly are, are, as you mentioned, we're taping this particular show at a, at a much different time than normal uh, to accommodate our myself and our coaching staff being able to get on the road today after practice where we can uh, get to Texas and watch some players get into Mississippi and watch some players and certainly we've we're covering the entire state of Louisiana. The Lions are certainly uh, stocking up the cupboard there as they're going to add some more players for next year as two guys that have already signed here some guys that some big guys inside I think our fans will be really excited to see those guys when they get to campus and also the other guys that uh, coaches the coaching and coaching staffs are working on. All right, coach, let's talk about the games coming up. Two games on the road. Uh, first of all, you're going to take the long trip up to Conway, Arkansas and take on Central Arkansas. And you'll come back two days later and play uh, against Northwestern State in Natchitoches. But you won't come home. It's going to be a road trip where you're going to stay out on the road for a few days. Well, you know, we've kind of gotten comfortable being home a little bit. And, uh, we, you know, earlier in the year we were on the road all the time. So, uh, you know, we're getting back on the road and ha have this road trip. We're certainly used to it. Um, uh, you mentioned Central Arkansas. Central Arkansas is one of the more improved teams from the beginning of league play until now in, in, in our league in the Southland. Um, they have, they, they've been a much different team at home than they've been on the road. They have a very young team and I think it, they're more comfortable like most basketball teams are in their home surroundings. So that's going to be a great challenge for us on Saturday. Obviously Northwestern, longtime rival of Southeastern. Uh, they, they've had an, gotten off to an outstanding start. They've won a number of close games here recently. Just beat UNO on a last second three point shot just before uh, we played uh, New Orleans. Um, so that'll be a great challenge for us to go in there on Monday night, but we're looking forward to it. Uh, we'll, then we'll come back obviously and, and, and head to UNO for, for, for the, the second, second round of our uh, heavyweight title match there on Thursday. So on next week's show, we're going to have highlights for you from the Central Arkansas game and the Northwestern State game as it's going to be a very exciting week. If you can't make the trip, make sure you follow your lines as always at lionsports.net and you can also tune in on KSLU 90.9 or online as all the games are streamed online as well to listen to your lines. And Lance Pittman does a great job as the voice of the Lions for Southeast. Well, that's going to do it for us. Thank you so much for joining us. We will see you next week right here on Inside Southeastern Basketball with Head Coach Jay Ladner presented by the Hampton Inn of Hammond. Thank you.